You are most welcome to this presentation on environment in the livestock and fish CRP. What trends impact environment? The first obvious trend is the ongoing livestock and fish revolution. The developing country demand driven production of animal source foods. This links to the scale and location of this production. Rapid increased production in countries that are often already environmentally stressed. There is also a shift in the composition of the livestock and fish production. We see that the chickens will dominate and we see that aquaculture will be bigger than catches of wild fish stocks. This trend also changes the feed mix and the overall production leads to fierce competition for feed resources. The intensification of ruminant production means more concentrate, which is already the feed for most monogastric animals, and which is also their increasing feed in aquaculture, for example soy as a protein uh, feed. So same feed base and massive competition. We look at the planet and think, how does this impact the environment? So some of the big issues are, of course, natural resource use. And we think about land, water, vegetation cover, soil fertility. Often this leads to overuse and even more often it leads to <laughs> severe degradation. Increased production often also means more emissions and more pollution. For example, more greenhouse gases, pesticides, agrochemicals and leakages of nutrients. A very intensive agricultural production, which is not environmentally sound, might undermine the resilience of these agroecological systems. For example, diversity loss or severe eutrophication. When we increasingly, increasingly put pressure on the environment, there's a risk of non-linear change. There's a risk that we reach a tipping point where the entire system flips into an unproductive state. Livestock and fish is for and by the poor. And the poor live in and live from and depend upon healthy landscapes. This must be our focus when you think about environment and livestock and fish. Again, we look at the planet and we think, what can livestock and fish do to preserve the environment? Well, livestock and fish is already doing a number of activities. We look into the SASI flagship, which has environment placed in it. And here we have life cycle assessments of fish value chains in Bangladesh and Egypt. We have the development of the cleaned ex-ante livestock environmental impact assessment tool. Uh, started to be developed in Tanzania last year and continued development in Uganda this year. We have a new project on trade-off modeling of fodder crops and environment in Tanzania. We have ongoing and constantly growing measures of greenhouse gases and other environmental uh, parameters by the Masangira lab at Iri, including greenhouse gas chambers for live animals. And we have a new biomass framework for better natural resource management at landscape level. In the flagship feeds and forages, we heard yesterday from Michael Blumel how you can use feeds and forages to improve or reduce, for example, carbon balances, natural resource management and environmental footprints. Also the flagship's genetics and animal health can in some ways contribute to a better environment. 
animals who have the best genetic setup to uh, use feed resources or withstand different kinds of stress and improved animal health, if you do that with animals, you get an overall better efficiency of natural resource use and then less use of natural resources or feed sources. And of course, in VCTS, we have uh, the value chains and most of the value chain leaders are very keen to increase their work on environmental issues. One example is the Uganda value chain, uh, who operates with Irish aid money and will this year focus on waste handling from slaughterhouses and the general pig production. However, we should not forget our new partners in livestock and fish. I hereby invite SLU and Wageningen University to see if they can contribute to our environmental agenda. Welcome. So, livestock and fish, just like Ilri, must respond to the heavy criticism of environmental impacts from livestock and fish production. A milestone in this criticism is the book Livestock's Long Shadow from FO in 2006. And then in parallel we have the <coughs> constant uh, issue of greenhouse gases from ruminants, which uh, made Lord Stern give the advice we should give up meat to save the planet. So we have to wonder is this how we should do it, just stop everything, or what is our focus for the future? So, how should livestock and fish position itself to be able to give valuable answers? As we know that everyone who works with livestock or fish production, we have to look upon this uh, entire activity from a system perspective. We should use a system resilience perspective and we should look upon how does livestock and fish production impact the surrounding environment. We should look at resource competition for biomass, land, water. We should move from single currency, for example, only looking at greenhouse gases, to use a multi-currency approach to see trade-offs. We should assess different scales. For example, if we have interventions at the local scale with feeds and forages, how does that play out on the basin, national, regional, or even the global scale? An important perspective in livestock and fish is the value chain. From field to fork. And we should here not forget to keep in mind how processes around the commodity along the value chain impacts the environment. This also includes to keep a close eye on losses along the value chain. Above all, we have to make sure that we give a context and pretend, uh, present sustainable alternatives. So, in many ways, environmental footprints and natural resource use can be presented as a number. And these figures might not have a real meaning. We have to give these numbers a meaning and we should also, if we talk about a resource that links to scarcity, we have to give it a local context. In addition, of course, we could and should continue to work on improving these uh, footprint values and natural resource use um, estimates, for example, greenhouse gases for livestock production in developing countries. Overall, one could say that livestock and fish should focus on being able to respond and present alternatives for environment smart fish and livestock production. Thank you.